Okay, we're live, we're here. It must be Wednesday afternoon because it's Hawaii, the state of clean energy, with Olin Lagan from Kanu, Hawaii, and uh, Derek Sonoda from Hawaii Energy. And I, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the common denominator is, but we've, we have found something for a discussion on this show about the state of energy. We're going to call this <clears throat> Reaching the People with Clean Energy. And there's a bunch of you know, uh, implications in that. We're going to reach all the people. We're going to find out exactly how you do that, and we're going to make sure that clean energy covers the state like a blanket. That's what we're going to do. No exceptions, no exemptions. <laughs> this is going to be a great discussion. We, 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 we're not taking prisoners on this show. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Welcome to the show, you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> okay, but uh, before we do that, we're going to talk about... Uh, commercial uh, lighting programs of Hawaii Energy and for this purpose we have Keith Block here who uh, looks terrific on camera. Keith, have you thought about Hollywood? <laughs> no, I have not thought about Hollywood, but thanks for asking. Uh, and, tell, us, tell us about your latest program on lighting and commercial lighting. Today I wanted to talk about uh, what we call our commercial midstream program and what that is is a program where contractors working with customers can go directly to lighting distributors and get the incentive on the material when they buy the material. So it's kind of similar to our residential customers who can go to Costco, go to Home Depot, go to you know those places and get uh, LED lights and CFLs and get the incentive as they're checking out. We've now instituted that for our commercial customers so a lighting contractor can go to a customer can do uh, the audit of their building, find out how many lights they need to get. They can go to a distributor now, a lighting, commercial lighting distributor, buy that equipment and get the incentive up front, very much reducing their initial cost on this, improving their cash flow for their small business. So making it a lot easier for the contractor to, to do the project and making it easier for the com customer to, to get the project. That's a great idea. You know, because there is a, you know, this moment of uh, hesitation of, 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 you know, is this really going to happen? Do I have to go through some process to get this benefit they're telling me? Now you get it right there, you know, at or before the cash register. That's fabulous. Right. And also for a lot of the lighting contractors, they're small, small businesses too, where cash flow is very, very important to them. So now with us fronting the uh, incentive up front, they have much less cash outlay. They can devote more money to their labor and stuff like that. They can get more and more projects uh, with the same amount of money. I have two questions. How does it work on your side of the fence? I mean, mechanically, how do you make this happen so everything falls into line and people do what you want them to do about this transaction? That's, that's a very good question because that's the harder part when you're talking with commercial customers. That's why it took us longer to get this program going because we actually have to have a very good tracking system from the distributor because he has to know who the contractor is, he has to know who the customer is, so the contractor has to tell them who the customer is, has to tell them what their uh, account number is so that we can make sure we credit enough of the lights going at that location. So we have to get the right number of lights at the right location with the right customer. So it's a little bit more complicated. Well, why do I feel there's a database involved here somewhere? There, there absolutely is a database. And uh, again, I can't stress the fact that it requires the distributor to have a very good database as well, not just us. So we're putting a call out. We'd like to work with all the distributors, all the lighting distributors. But that's one of the key things. You've got to have a pretty good database. OK. And then my, my next question, which will be my last question, then I'm going to turn it over to these guys for their questions. Whoa, uh, <laughs> um, is, um, you know, I always imagine you guys are sitting around a table somewhere at 2 o'clock in the morning coming up with all these ridiculous, creative, innovative ideas. Uh, is that what happened this time? And who came up with it? I need to know. We all need to know. Th that's absolutely what happens. Derek and I were just there the other night until 2 o'clock, right, Derek? Yes, we were. <laughs> there was a luge involved. <laughs> <laughs> No, we do. I mean, we very much try to come up with innovative solutions. This one happened to come out of the cash flow issues with contractors and us thinking about how can we make it quicker and easier for uh, contractors to participate now, because now we're, when we're dealing with commercial customers, we have to make it easier for the contractor as well, not just the customer. And that's how we came up with this, you know, cash flow is big to them. 
So if we can put that money up front through a distributor, it just makes it a lot it's easier. A great for idea. To really, really way out there. It's going to make things easier for everybody. They're going to love it. So now, now we got cross examination, if you don't mind. Okay. Alden, what kind of questions you got for Keith? Ah, for Keith, um, what, what's the typical size of lighting deal that you're talking about? That's a good question, too, because one of the interesting things with lighting and commercial customers is typically some rule of thumb numbers is just regardless of the size you are, lighting projects tend to be uh, about a third of the cost is covered by our incentive, about a third of the cost is covered by that first year savings, and about a third of the cost is covered by the second year savings, so giving you a two year payback. And that's kind of universal to, regardless of whether you're a very big commercial customer or whether you're a very small commercial customer, but those are kind of numbers that you can remember, usually a two year payback on lighting projects. Are there other benefits other than energy savings that you guys are seeing with lighting? Like yeah, that? actually that's a good question too because uh, obviously with uh, lower energy lights, you're actually putting out less heat. So you're actually saving on your air conditioning system too. You know, the LEDs are putting out way less heat than like an incandescent bulb. An incandescent bulb is essentially like a heater, right? So uh, the more efficient you can get on your lighting, the more efficient you are on your air conditioning as well. So if we are a business and we want it in on this deal because we want somebody to come over and retrofit our lights, what do we have to do? Well, one, the first thing you can do is go to our webpage, hawaiienergy.com, and we now have what we call a clean energy uh, ally program where we have a database there, another database, where you can search for uh, clean energy allies that do lighting projects. So you can go to our webpage and find a uh, lighting contractor that can help you with these projects. And then also you can look and see what our incentive ours is for those measures. Is that just for Oahu? What, uh, more? Is that just for Oahu? No, um, all islands with the exception of Kauai. So uh, Maui County, Hawaii County, and uh, uh, Honolulu County. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Keith Block. Thank you, Hawaii Energy. Thanks for coming around. Thanks for a great idea. And thanks for some great questions, you guys. Thank <laughs> you for inviting me, Jay. It's always a pleasure. Next time. Thank you. Aloha. Okay, now we're going to get more serious. We're going to ramp up here. Well, before we ramp up, I did retrofit our home to yeah. LED. Yeah. Huge difference. So I, not, not only for businesses, but I think individuals as well. You know what, Alden, we retrofitted the studio for LED. This is all LED. Huge difference. I, I, I yeah, it's so <laughs> cool in here. Uh, you know, See how cool that is? It sure know? is, yeah. And we get all kinds of adjustments on it. It's really good. I would never be without them again. So, uh, you know, uh, tweeting, now, uh, you know, uh, I understand from little birdies here in the studio that you know a lot about social media. Not a lot, but some. Okay. Yeah. So you see the screen over there. We have our uh -huh. tweet screen. And uh, we're going to, you know, try to take questions. I want to tell everybody that, uh, you know, if they have an inclination to, you know, make a comment or ask a question, we're at, at thinktechhi, H-I, okay? And uh, Olin will be able to read the screen because his eyes are much younger than mine and we'll be able to take your questions and make you famous, more famous. I was just wondering, do people know Olin and what organization you're with? I was just kind of curious if they understand what his organization is. No, we're going to make him the mystery man. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, Olin, tell us about Kanu Hawaii. All right, so Kanu Hawaii is actually on the cover store of mid the current midweek, so if you want to read a about us, you can do that. Uh, we're about seven years old. We're a grassroots organization, about 20,000 members, and we work statewide around sustainability issues, food, energy, and waste campaigns. That's very modest description of your organization. Very we, modest. We, we do some fun things, like we've run an Eat Local Challenge and got thousands of people to change their diet for a month. We've run energy challenges and, and things like that. Yeah, it's great. So, you're part of the, I mean, maybe not you individually, but you're part of the millennial generation. Maybe you individually, eh? I, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm closer <laughs> to you, I yeah, think. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one other thing that I think Olin does, his organization does, that I haven't seen any other organizations do, is they get people to pay attention to the political issues during voting time. And if you ever go to his website, he gets national recognition for what they do to bubble up the issues so people can make an informed decision. And hats off to this gentleman. For hats off that. to that. Yeah, yeah you've been doing thanks. that a long time. Yeah, that we we went door to door. We spent months sort of on the ground talking to folks. But online, last election, we engaged a hundred thousand people. Here. Here. Yeah, it wow. was a mass amount of people coming in, playing our candidate game, 
uh, reading up about issues. I mean, <laughs> people do want to know. People think that people don't want to know. It's not true. They just want easy access and access that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's take a minute on that, though. You want 100,000 sure. people. Yeah. How, first of all, how do you achieve 100,000 people? Uh, well, we, we had a very unique way to get ca candidate information. So we asked all the candidates a bunch of questions. We limited that to 250 words, kind of like a little bigger version of Twitter. Mm -hmm. So the question appeared, and then you would read all your candidates' responses, but you don't know who said what. So you'd pick the one you like the most. Oh, and at the end, we would say 40% of the time you pick this person, 20% this person. <laughs> and it, it basically boiled down to nothing is black and white. We had very few people that had 100% with one candidate. And so it gave this really different approach to sort of figuring out who to vote for. Yeah. And then we also made it easy. You just put in your address and pop, all your candidates are on one screen versus like, what district am I in? Did it change? And you know, all that went away. We just Dan, made a super dance card. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> you know, read the question, pick what you like. And we had people complain saying, I really don't like that candidate, but I align with that candidate. What do I do? I don't know. You know? <laughs> so we had people that said, I'm in this party, but I didn't pick my party candidate. What do I do? Well, pick the person you, you, you sort of align with. And this so is really valuable. It, it is huge. And CNN put us on their front page at CNN.com for that particular candidate yeah. game because they thought it was a little bit disruptive. And, we ended up registering thousands of people to vote as a result. It's yeah, so. wonderful. Now, I get the feeling from what you, how you described it that you don't actually take positions and try to advocate for this, that, or the other thing. No. Yeah. You're, you're saying what the candidates are advocating for. Right. And then you let people make their own choice. Well, first we ask people, what do you care about? Like, what's important to you? Then we ask those same questions to the candidates. And so we, you know, uh, so for example, in Waianae, we did a lot of uh, on the ground work there, and people were concerned about education and traffic. And Kailua rail came up. Sure. And so whatever the questions came up, we asked those candidates those specific questions that their constituents were really, uh, like in Kailua, there are a lot of issues about the, the buses coming in with tourists. So we, you know, we asked a question about that, and, and then we wanted to see if we can get a, a definitive answer from candidates. We're having a show about that. Uh, in fact, I should look at your website, get ideas for other shows. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. You okay. should. It's amazing, his website. In fact, you'll have to come back. We'll have to discuss this further. That. Yeah, this is really important. It's important to raise uh, awareness about political issues, you know, and because um, if you don't do that, then people don't know what to do in Election right. Day. And Election Day is, uh, you know, I mean, I get the feeling it's just like two governments in the world. One is a legitimate, you know, government, and the other one is what happens on the street. And the question is, which will prevail? <laughs> yes. Um, I could name names, but I won't. <laughs> I mean, we, walked on, we walked and knocked on thousands of doors, and we just asked folks. People want to talk about these issues. I mean, you would think that people don't vote, so they're, they're not, they don't have the appetite that, to participate. That's not true. You know, they, they definitely want a different way to participate and engage. So what's your sense of the millennial you know, state of mind over this? Are they, um, are they part of that group that they want information they want to be involved or have some of them given up I, I don't I can't speak for them but I, I think that's la latter half you know I, I think a lot of people have chose not to participate as a way to participate and so we're hoping to change that by making Good. it easy but also to get, take money out of politics when you play a game it doesn't matter how much uh, you spent on advertising because your name's not on there your picture is not on there in fact candidates you never heard of are going to bubble up and and, and we'll show that. and at the end we should actually give you the contact information for your candidate to go tell them what you think you know if the one that you picked or or if it was 50 50. and so we just want people to have that information so, so it's great yeah. this is really very positive. we can talk about that later too yeah, yeah. no i want to yeah. so jay can you just imagine what this gentleman and his organization thinking about policies and politics and issues can do for the energy world and that's the reason why Hawaii Energy has aligned with this gentleman. You're trying to do a segue on me, aren't you? I am, I am. I want to I wanna bring we this back to your topic. <laughs> but if you can just see this, so there's a lot of people who don't get involved with uh, energy communications, energy communities, because they feel like they don't understand it. But aligning with these gentlemen, this gentleman, his organization, he's allowed communications to bridge generations, bridge um, cultures, um, just by, I want him to share it's today. It's perfect. It's yeah, perfect. Yeah, it is. It well, is. Now we're going to take a break. We're going to we get reorganized. No, I, this is the no, good no, part. No, no. We okay. see Sharon Moriwaki there. We're going to bring her in. Awesome. Okay. Oh. We're going to take one minute break. That's Owen Lagan and Derek Sonoda and soon to be Sharon Moriwaki here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy, yeah. talking about reaching the people, all the people, with clean energy. Wow. Okay, one more chair. Hi. I'm Ethan Allen. I host Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii, and I do this because I care about 
science literacy in Hawaii. I want to spread the understanding that science is a vital and interesting part of everyone's life. I want to make sure the broadest possible spectrum of people understand the beauty and the value of science and realize that science plays out each and every day of their lives. I want you to understand that science is fun. So we bring on to this show each week guests who are scientists, from astronomers to zoologists, and we talk about what they do and how they do it. But most importantly, we talk about why you should care about their work, why you should see that their work has value and impact on your life. So I hope you'll join us Fridays, 1 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. You can watch us via live stream. You can watch us uh, recorded on Olelo, and you can see us uh, each week. We hope you'll join us. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Owen Lagan of Kanu, Hawaii, um, uh, Derek Sonoda of Hawaii Energy, Sharon Mori Waki. Let's flash on her and see how great <laughs> she looks. You know, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, and I think that camera has to be adjusted, Sachi. Uh, in, any, in any event, we're going to talk about reaching the people with clean energy. And my question to you guys is, what do you mean by reaching the people? One of the, the things that we see in Hawaii Energy is the people always come to Hawaii Energy are the same people that always come to Hawaii Energy. We don't see people at restaurants, for example. We don't see people who are at barber stores. We don't see uh, the school teachers. We don't see all of those that are part of the community. What we do see are the people who are interested in policy changes, who are interested in sustainability. And the sad part about it is they usually are, um, this is the sad part, very well educated and they speak so differently from the general communications of the common person that it's not communicated well to the common person. So if we were to pick one of my relatives, I always use my mom, so mom, forgive me. Having somebody very well educated, and my mom is an accomplished person, she retired, she won't get the full meaning of why energy is important, why conservation is important, and what it means for her church group, her sphere. She doesn't get it because they're communicating in a way that it doesn't impact okay, let me, her. Let me go to that because, you know, when I walked in here to meet you guys, I had it in my brain that we would talk about the, you know, the public attitudes these days mm -hmm. about energy because we've had a lot of action and a lot of stuff has come and gone it's been very confusing actually um i don't know where we are right now uh, anybody you know will tell you that yes um, so the question is right now and this goes to your description right now where is the public what what, what do you can you put yourselves in the skins of the public and try to tell us what they're thinking right now about clean energy and the energy initiative do they have a sense of it. What is that sense? I know this is hard. You know, one of the major takeaways that I get, this I'm speaking as Derek Sonora, not as a way energy, is the people that I communicate with outside of the office, they really want to stick it to everybody who is trying to dictate how much they have to pay for energy. They don't really care who's supplying it. They don't really care about a lot of things. They just feel the hurt that they're being subjected to whatever rates and they don't have a say in their destiny. That's my takeaway of it. And it doesn't matter if it's a business or an individual. They feel like they're left to whatever everybody's going to make up for their destiny. Somebody's taking advantage of that. And they're, they're, they don't have a say in it. And anytime they do put a say in it, they're like, you don't understand. You know, let us take care of this for you. And I find that very common amongst the island. OK. How about you? So I'll give you an example. I, you know, we do a lot of listening, so and not just on Oahu. We go to different islands, and, and I remember we had a group of volunteers. We went to Lanai, and we just asked folks, knocked on doors, like, you know, what do you think about wind? What do you think about clean energy? And we wrote down what people said, and there are a couple of themes that popped out that are maybe surprising to me, uh, maybe not for for you, Jay, but you know, one was like the steam around. You know, we need an extra freezer because we live off the land. Everyone's hunting. You go to every single home on this street, and you're going to find venison and kole and things that we collect. And so it's hard to think we might lose some access. And, uh, and, and then the second thing um, they felt was, you know, they, they don't mind sharing, but it was hard for some folks to see to run ACs on different islands. You know, it was this the, the fairness really came up. And so we're seeing in different communities a lot of fairness issues pop up, renters that feel like maybe they don't have that many options to, to participate in clean energy, 
or people who are waiting for PV uh, approval or people who, who don't have the financial literacy to make something happen. So there's still a lot of that that we're trying to work with and, and help and, and bring some solutions to. But there's still a lot of excitement around energy too. I guess. And what is that? What is the excitement? Excitement is that um, people now have more choice than I think they've ever had before. You know, before you bought a light bulb and it, you know, you chose a 60 or 80 or 100. You know, now you can, I mean, you can different shapes and waterproof and some that control by your phone. And so, like this whole realm of, of possibilities opening up, not just with lighting, but the air conditioning, things that you can control. Even if you're a renter, there's so many things that you can participate with. And so people are starting to see that they can actually control uh, some of their energy future. And so I, I'm starting to see that, that buzz around that. What about the tension between uh, clean energy and cheap energy? I mean, Derek referred to that. And I, I think a lot of people have sort of gone in that corner and they're all ticked off that it's too expensive. And it yes. is too expensive. But we didn't start there. We started with clean. You know, in 2008, they all got excited about clean. And we're talking about renewable energy, you know, on every block. Um, but then somewhere in the middle, I want to say 2010 or 11, uh, people weren't talking about clean so much. They, they had become aware that it was expensive and they were driven toward you know, how expensive it was and what can we do to make it cheaper. Where, where, do, are people aware of that transition? Are they aware the whole thing has morphed from one thing into another? And the two are, you know, at least in the minds of a lot of people, unrelated even though they are. We know they are related because it takes money to build clean energy. It doesn't happen by magic. Um, so are people aware of that? Is there a conversation about that? Did you stumble into that in, for example, Lanai, where, you know, they didn't want wind. They didn't want wind. Wind would have helped them in terms of the, the amount of money they paid for energy. You know, it was right there. I mean, Molokai, we, we worked with families that spent more for energy than they spent on rent. And that was heartbreaking to, yeah. to see that. Like $800 for electricity and $750 for rent. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, it's real. Yeah. 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 I did get a chance when that was at its peak to be on Lanai. And at that time, this was several years ago when Hawaii Energy was first started, uh, the kind of sense I got for the community was it wasn't about where the generation source was with the wind. It was more about how they were herded or steered into a direction and they had no control. So off the airplane, I went to get, uh, all they wanted to know is, are you for or against wind? And I said, hi, my name is Derek. <laughs> and they didn't want to any, they just wanted to know where I stood on that um, because there was this I've huge had issue. That yeah, it was this huge yeah. issue. There's two kinds of people in the world, for yeah. or against. <laughs> <laughs> but that's sad because it blocks the bigger issues because they're so emotionally attached, charged, for this sense of somebody's trying to take advantage of me. They can't get past that point and start seeing the real issues at hand. Um, and I don't know how we get past that really. Where did this come from? I mean, would you say, you know, you guys in Kano, you study history also, I know you do. And you, you know, you try to put it together on a sort of an integrated basis. But where did it come from that people don't trust the system? They feel that somebody is taking advantage. The knee-jerk reaction is if it's bad, somebody taking advantage of me. And I'm, I'm going to dwell on that and be all hoo-hoo about that. Um, this has been a long time. It's, was this existing, for example, at statehood? Or did we invent this more recently than that? I don't know. I don't have an opinion about that, because that's a deeper issue. But I do know Hawaii Energy has been able to turn it around by empowering people. So we didn't go after the cause. What we did was we went after the solution. And I've shared with you, and Helen Y has been on this, sharing the aloha speaks to the general public in a very emotional, experienced way. And they get her messaging, and they come away with that, with a front um, live-facing um, presentation that they can take control of their energy use. And they get really happy well, about it. You know, uh, uh, Owen talked about um, you know, the, the family with the $750 energy bill. Well, if you came around and said, let me show you how we're going to make that 500 or 403, or who knows what you can do, you know, you, you're directly addressing their problem. It's, it, and you're right, it's within their control, yeah, completely within their control. If they just follow your 10-point program, whatever it is, yes. you know, they will be happier. 
Uh, but that only goes so far, it right, does, there. It doesn't it does. go the whole distance. It does. And one of the interesting parts that um, Olin's organization uh, pointed out years ago to us is, when I look at the energy world in a residential situation, I think about my own family history and how we use energy. Olin's team totally shocked me, where they came away and they said, you know, depending on the families, they will use energy differently in their background and their culture. And they shared with me what they found right over here across the street, right in downtown, how families were cooking. And I'm going to let Olin tell that story because I was shocked because our family don't do that. Yeah, it's an interesting example. So two buildings downtown, primarily Chinese American. And so we went to try and help them reduce energy. Mm -hmm. And so since they were renting, they couldn't change their appliances. They live in an apartment, so no solar options. So what do you do? So we started talking to them. Turns out they were cooking soups for hours a day. And so we thought, well, that's a lot of energy in these inefficient uh, electric resistant stoves. And so we researched the issue. We ended up introducing uh, thermal cooking pots. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. But you bring it up to boil, and it's a double insulated pot, and you just keep it closed. After it boils, you just turn it off, and it stays hot for about seven or eight hours. Because it's covered. Yeah, so you start it off in the morning, you go to work, you come back, and the soup's done. So not only did it reduce energy significantly, but it increased your lifestyle um, because you never had to like watch the thing and stir it safe because you're not using electricity when you're away from home. Otherwise, you can't leave the stove on when you're home. So that's an example of a very culturally appropriate energy tip that can make a difference. And we had some families during that, that month-long challenge that went down 50% of their energy use. Just so, for that. Uh, well, that and some other things, too. And so, the soup was just as good. Or not better, because it's you know, slow cooked. You know, slow cooked. I didn't get a chance to try it, so I'm right here. Yeah. But you know, like, you let me ask yeah, you I gotta check that. So, do you have a Wi-Fi router at home? Is it on 24 hours a day? 24 hours. Yeah. Is that a really good thing to do? Probably not. Probably not. You're going to yeah. tell me I'm not going to tell you what to do, but, but you can solve that for a $5 device that you can pick up at the corner store that can set a timer on it. That just say, I don't need it from midnight to 5. Or if you have kids and you want them off the internet at 8, you set it from 8 p.m. to whatever. I know a lot of parents would like that. Yeah, energy goes off. Same thing with digital video recorders or water coolers. There are a lot of things that use this energy phantom load. Uh, or energy that's being used when no one really needs it that can be managed. And so families do have those options nowadays. And that's what I meant by the excitement. You yeah. can do something if you're it's, empowered. It's empowerment. And so Hawaii Energy is helping us to empower more and more people. So Hawaii Energy, do, do you, are you advancing those devices into the home? Are you, do you have deals with those devices? Because all is right. I mean, you could change everything in the home if you turned all that stuff off when you're not using it. So the question, but you know, you've got to incentivize people to do it on the wall. They just won't get off their duff. So I'm going <laughs> to give you what, what we found. You know, remember when we had that old VCR thing and you put the tape in there and it clunks and it does all those things? I bet you there was one time period that the clock was just flashing, 12, mm -hmm. because you couldn't set the time or you didn't program it. So what you had to do is you had to wait till your show actually started and hit the record button because you didn't want to figure out how to record it. Well, Olin came around with this awesome idea, his organization, and what he did was he took those simple timers that we've all seen all our lives at the store, and he changed the instructions into local friendly terminology. He changed the pictures and everything else, and lo and behold, people understood how to program that thing, and it wasn't as hard as they thought it was going to be, and change started. So they got happen. the benefit of it. They got the, the benefit. First time. And most importantly, they got excited about it because they figured out this magical tool that they couldn't ever figure out, and they shared it with their friends. It didn't yeah. cost anything. But we yeah. felt bad, though, because we, put, we had a control group where we gave them no extra instruction. <laughs> so they would call and say, you know, this is frustrating. How do you do this? And we felt bad. Well, yeah. you, know, you got to look at what instructions came with it. And then the guys, they got the infographic, that big pictures and stuff. You know, huge success because they, they rated the program as successful. They loved it. They passed it on. 90% installed it within the first week. But then the, the group that <laughs> did not get that, less than half even tried, you know. So we, we, we see that there's a big disconnect with the way we actually give things to people and the way that should be given to people so that they're more successful at installing it. Simple I, adjustment. I think this working. also yeah. reveals that, <clears throat> and I want to cover this in the next uh, part of the program, it also reveals that you can go out, you can talk to people, you can have interviews, you can see what they're thinking, find out what the collective you know, group people are thinking, and then, and this is the hard part, you translate that into action, so you sort of feedback and show them how they can solve the problem that they've been articulating to you. Okay, and uh, you've, we've seen a little of that just now, but let's see more. Olin Lagan, Kanu Hawaii, uh, Derek Sonoda, Hawaii Energy, and in the 
in the background there is Sharon Marie Wacky. I know she's there. How about a shot of Sharon? Just, oh, just, I, I want to, pr okay, uh. I want to prove that she's there. Smile. Here. Thank you. Nice. Okay, here in Hawaii, the state of energy, reaching the people with clean energy. You'll see. We'll be right back. I'm Ted Ralston, folks, host of our show at Think Tech Hawaii called Where the Road Leads, where we talk about technology influencing the future of Hawaii. Technology, of course, is the art of solving problems. We always bring in interesting and informed guests who can see from different perspectives and different points of view how that future might unfold and how technology can assist us in getting there. So once again, join us 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Fridays. Uh, Ted Ralston, your host. And please, if you have ideas that you'd like us to address on this show or folks who you think should be on it, let us know. Aloha. I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Bingo, we're back. Olin Lagan of Kanu, Hawaii, and Derek Sonoda of Hawaii Energy here, and, we, and Sharon Moriwaki here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Wednesday, reaching the people with clean energy. And, uh, you know, before we go any further, we need to know why you guys are so comfortable together. You're obviously collaborating about something. What is it? Or as they say, Keska say. <laughs> I was wondering, my, I, that's not what I say. But <laughs> <Kesuke Seikasa. laughs> what, what is it that you're doing together? Well, one of the things that we wanted to do, and Olin's a master at this, is how to reach the masses cost effectively. And when he came to Hawaii, Hawaii Energy and we talked and everything else, I really love that idea because we have to be very frugal with our money at Hawaii Energy. And he has a way of taking a look at a problem and bringing it forth with a huge reach. Like he shared with you, the 100,000, that is amazing. So when we had the success with sharing of the Aloha, where we did this um, 30 to 100 people at a time, it wasn't reaching the entire population. So I decided to reach out to Owen and virtualize the sharing of the Aloha into a way that we can do this. And they've come up with an incredible solution. And I want Olin to share a little bit about what he's doing with us right now to test this solution that they've come up with. Okay. So what, what we did, Jay, was we created 19 videos, three minutes about each, and it's one topic per video. And so we have a topic for video games. And video games take energy, so how do you reduce energy use with video games? So we cover everything that requires a plug or uses energy in Hawaii. But we don't factor in all the things that are for the continent, so it's very Hawaii-focused. And we deliver it over email. And so we, we're now working with five companies, and we're testing the, the curriculum, so to speak. So it's a 19-day um, energy challenge. So on day one, you get refrigerators and freezers, day two, and so on and so on. Then at the end, uh, we wrap it up, and we actually look at your energy bill and see how many of those tips you took into consideration to reduce your load. And then we, have a, we anoint a winner. So we, we, we did this as like workplace challenge. So we have like this workplace against this workplace, or oh, this cool. department against this cool. department, and it's based on your actual energy bill. So working with Hawaii Energy, people plug in their, their account number, and we're able to track. So you can't just say, yeah, I participated, but rather, you know, if you did drop, then why? You know, when we, we piloted this in Y&I, um, we had a ceremony at the end, and so the winner, they didn't know it at, at first, but at the ceremony, they had to get up and share, like, why did you reduce 50%? So then they went through all the different things that they did, but it was a way that then the community can share, too. And then we also have rules for like how not to uh, use energy. Like you can't go to your coworker's house and do laundry, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't want cheating to happen. Or, or not take a shower every uh, day for a few days. That. But, but yeah. you know, but in all seriousness, I think the the thing with energy is, is it's also a literacy issue, and so you need to be taught um, different ways to save energy, uh, other than just you know putting PV on your roof because that's something that that only a few people can do but then everyone else can do everything else. And so we're really focused on what things actively you can do. And it's fun. And we guarantee that every week you learn something. You'll be blown away by the content. That was great. One of the yeah. things that I want to share with you that Olin does is he, uh, he properly identified way up front that language is a barrier. Words are a barrier. Because if I say a particular word to you and Sharon, you'll come away with a certain meaning. Then I'll tell that same word 
to my children who are teenagers today, and they will have a totally different mm -hmm. viewpoint of what that means. If we are going to actually reach the entire population of the state, Olin took away most of the words. What he did is he substituted the words with pictures. Not only are it pictures, but it's pictures that when you look at it, you have a sense that this is done for Hawaii. There's Hawaii is a strong factor in it, and his artist did a masterful job. So I'll give you, for example, he has a refrigerator. The door is open. There's a cat with his butt sticking out of the door, and the, 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 the refrigerator door is full of stickers that you would see around Hawaii. So you knew that was here, and it is talking to us. And if you do this bad behavior about sticking your butt out in the refrigerator <laughs> hanging out there, that's something you need to, I do that. And you'll pay attention to the lessons that he's teaching after that. He goes through one step at a time. All of those videos that he shares, it shows you the bad behavior you could be doing. And here are all the alternatives to fix your bad behavior in a very pictorial, very video sense. There's very few spoken words in this thing, and it communicates. Well, I over can, that barrier. You can see what's happening here. I mean, you know, Hawaii Energy deals in incentives, all kinds of, you know, we've, we've seen hundreds of them here in this, in this show, um, to change public behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're now talking about other ways to change public behavior. With Hawaii Energy. You know, with Hawaii Energy. You guys are really doing the same thing. And uh, so, so little by little, you know, especially the kids, they learn and then that becomes part of the family culture, and then the family is going to be a more efficient family. We have an activity book for kids where yeah. there's a tip and something fun to do, and then after learning, you, you, they get to see some of the good behavior and model that as well, because it does matter. Kids pay attention. They're much more perceptive than we ever will imagine. Right, and they're influential with yeah. their parents, mm -hmm. and they come back from you know a lesson, whatever, a learn, they learn these things, they tell their parents what we have to do now parents listen. I saw they this. do. They I saw do. this in many places. So I'm going to put you and Sharon on the spot here. And just a little bit, so forgive me. I want to see how many ways to save electricity can you think of right now for your home? How many different ways can you think of right now to save electricity in your home? The power strip, so they turn everything off when you're not using it. Um, LED lights. Um, let's see. Turn off the lights and turn off the air conditioning. Great, yeah. great, all good. All those. Um, let's see, what else? Jay, come on. <laughs> I, I am uh, drawn inexorably to uh, an experience that Sharon and I had on Lanai, where we were making a movie for OC-16. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and of course, the issue was wind versus no wind. And um, we talked to some high school oh, kids there. Right. At the, yeah. It was a high school fair, actually. When you talk about school in Lanai, you're talking about all grades. Yes. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> it was, we were talking to a couple of high school kids, and it was this very quick-witted woman, a girl. And uh, so we said to her, uh, you know, so if you don't want wind, um, you know, what, what do you think you want? How are you going to light your homes and everything? And she said, oh, solar. We're going to put solar everywhere. We want solar everywhere in Lanai. No wind, all solar. And I said to her, w what happens? When the sun goes down, what, hap what happens then? Um, and she said, without hesitation, immediately, she said, we'll go to sleep early. <laughs> so different. So, so different. I, I take my, my response out of her book and tell you, well, you know, get a lot of rest. <laughs> so <laughs> Go to sleep early. So this you is, don't use electricity when what you What you just express is a problem. And the reason why I want to say that is you, too, represent some of the more educated people around the state about how to save energy. But yet, it took you some struggle and some effort to come up with 10 ways to save energy. No. OK, well, you know, hey. I didn't struggle. You struggled. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. But my point is, Olin's group has identified, I'm going to let Olin say how many, just a general number, how many energy saving tips they came up with that they're sharing in this curriculum that they've developed. Do you guys participate together actively? I mean, in other words, when you go out, talk to people, is Derek with you and vice versa? No, in a future life, we're Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> but, Starsky and Hutch. Yes, yeah, Starsky, okay, Starsky and Hutch. I'm a good looking one. Okay, just go with that. But, but how many? Can, I want to know how many. That we've missed. <laughs> uh, we can give you at least a hundred like really? easy actionable things that you can do right here, right now. Okay, we gotta get those videos. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just they've come up with a um, hundred tips, really useful tips, and then they did something further. 
You know, you've heard that expression, show me the money. Uh, they can tell you how much money you'll save by taking these tips, the individual tips. Most of them have a dollar saving value. And he's gone a step further. He can tell you how much it is on Lanai versus Oahu mm. versus Molokai. Mm. Because people don't really care about the other islands. They only want to care they about know. their island. So his messaging is powerful because it speaks to the individual wherever they are on the island. It's fun. It's fun. So it's hooked yeah. up to Hawaii Energy data, and that's why they can get actual specific data on how much I'm saving. It was actually a collaboration effort. Our engineers validated their formulas and validated how much energy they can save, the individuals if they take this. Because a lot of times, people want to know what they're going to be saving mm -hmm. because they're going to give up something. So if you're going to give up something, I think you would appreciate knowing how much you're going to save from it. Mm -hmm. So all in, you know, you've, you've had uh, a, a, some substantial measure of success with this, just as with your 100,000, uh, you know, uh, member website, or rather, what is it, social media? 20,000 members. And, yeah, 20,000 yeah. members. Um, and, you know, it's, it's worked. You, you, have, you, you have metrics to show that people actually are saving. So where do you go from here? What's the next step? in developing this initiative or do you have another one you know in the pipeline it's a good question jay we um you can read the midweek article <laughs> we don't actually talk about all the long-term things but i uh, just plug in midweek because they covered us midweek, yeah. yeah but the um and, and i'm happy to be here to, to share some of that we really believe that we're in it for the long haul so we've all made 20-year pledges to work with Connie, like either on staff or on the board or as, as volunteers because it's going to take that long we need to get to a point where we're more sustainable along energy, waste, food, uh, civic engagement, compassion. There's a lot of these things that we, we track. But the thing that we do differently is that each year we try to do something creative. And so we do something different. You know, we've done leadership things. We've done the Eat Local challenges, energy challenges. We've done waste challenges. One of my favorite project, projects was we went to Ala Moana Shopping Center, and we brought all this waste material, like trash. And then we set up this uh, recycling center. We had about 25 volunteers. And we told people, free gift wrapping, but trash. And then we just got people to talk about the issues of, you know, in December is when we produce most of our <laughs> solid waste. Yeah. And so we had this long line, and people wanted to donate. But then it was just the conversations that we had. Like, I don't know where this came from, but we think it's clean. You know, we, we wrapped it with, with waste materials and papers. And we had stamps to make it look semi-official. But people loved it. But people also thought, about other ways they can participate, but that, that's the kind of things that we like to do. We, we mix it up quite a so bit. So every year you come up with a... Try something, yeah. This something, year... Some, a new idea. Yeah. And it sounds like Hawaii Energy, actually. That's where a the... New idea every time. Candidate, candidate yeah, game came up. You know, one day we were like, you know, it's really hard to get candidate information on, on some of the smaller races. There's nothing. So what can we do about that? Oh, we can do a lot about that, and we did. And so it came up with, uh, you know, a solution. And, and because... So, so where's the boundary, uh, you know, all? I mean... So you have you have energy. This is really important. We right. all know that. And candidate, uh, you know, civic engagement, uh, political engagement, really important. Where's the boundary for you? I mean, it sounds like, you know, if it's progress, if it's a better state, it's it's on your beat. Am I right? No. It's where, a, where does it end for you? So food, energy, and waste. We 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 we're focused on increasing production of local food, decreasing the importation of. of foreign sources of energy, increasing the megawatts, sort of the efficiency side, and, uh, and doing things around civic engagement to get people more activated, whether it's volunteering, voting, or, or you know, getting out and learning, or uh, you know, working with the nonprofit. So we, we're really focused along the sustainability of Okay, funds. that's a great place to be. And Sharon and I have a suggestion for your next project. Ooh, where okay. we would love to hear. Well, speaking for both of us, because yeah. I know how she thinks. Yeah. And if it's crazy, Fresh that's okay, Sharon, too. Sharon, stand up for that. Yeah. That's Sharon and Sharon Moriwaki, and she's agreeing with me. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have a problem with energy in the state. You know, we're using too much fossil fuel, using too much energy. And nowhere is that more obvious than in transportation. We haven't figured that out yet. If you went out on the highway right now, you, you'd find everybody was in their cars, you know, using fossil fuel. And what did I hear the other day? That 42% of all the use of fossil fuel is used while you're sitting in traffic going nowhere. Oh, ugh, awful. Okay, so, so <clears throat> the question is changing public behavior, reaching the people about clean energy. What are you, this is, we're listening, both ears. How are we going to do that with transportation? Uh, you may not have figured it out, but maybe you could think about it for next time. You know, that's a really big issue, not just 
you asking that, but the clean energy initiative, the state goals, and so transportation is a tough one to, to crack because some of our families work two jobs and they live in places that are 20 miles away from their place of employment or places of employment. And without a car, you know, there's no time with their families. And so, you know, the, the car becomes important uh, on, on many fronts. And so, you know, how do you take that away from someone, that, that ability to, to go and pick up food on the way home and stuff? So, you know, personally, I think you always solve problems by starting with yourself. And so if you can't solve it for yourself, it's hard to start thinking about solutions for uh, others. And so over 10 years ago, I made a commitment not to buy a fossil fuel car, and I have not. So I'm on my third uh, non-fossil fuel car, actually fourth. And so uh, I, that's my own personal commitment. But then I know that uh, I don't have an answer for you, but I know that it starts there. And I, I'm, lear I'm learning a lot over these last 10 years on, on driving on alternative um, mechanisms. Yeah. But, Again, you know, as with the social media, maybe we can have a further discussion about yeah. this and try to explore the possibilities. But we're we're out of time. So there. Bold, yeah. I know, but so one bold thing. Let you, wrap oh. up. you have one minute to wrap up. One minute up. to wrap up. Talking about the transportation, I'll bring it all back up. But I bet you the way that Olin sees the car is very different from the way that you see the car. And the reason why is he shared with me one of the benefits of holding an electric vehicle is in case of a power outage, he can run his house for how many days? Uh, a week. A week on his electric car that no one even mentions that anywhere in why you should buy a car. And so I have done that. You know, I've run my because he answers the wife question. Sorry, wives, <laughs> about the safety factor about driving an electric vehicle that run out of power. He reverses that whole picture. Is when you're out of electricity, your car can power your house and you can have refrigerated food for a week. So that takes care of the other safety issue. But wrapping it all back up, if you guys are interested and you like the conversation that we had about energy and everything, please come to Hawaii Energy, sign up for a newsletter, go to our Facebook page, link with us, and you'll see that Olin and them are linked with us. And Olin talked about electricity savings, energy savings, the other week, the other month, on how to make breadfruit. And how many hits did you, I mean, not breadfruit, banana bread. How many hits did you get on that one energy saving tip for not well, using your oven to use a? A rice cooker. I think we, we broke 400,000. But what is interesting, I, I was talking to people. I was at the, the governor's really? office, and one, one of the, the ladies there said, I saw that. And I went to Umeki Market, and I bought some bananas to try it. So it's, re it's actionable sometimes. Because when you make it fun, it's and you true. get people an, 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 true. an so alternative. People I can't have that. cheeseburger. So we're, this is my minute. This is my time. minute. Oh. Oh. Before we're out of time. I wasn't oh. kidding. We're out of time. Yeah. Olin Lagan, Kana Hawaii, Dennis, uh, or rather Derek Sonoda, and Sharon Moriwaki, reaching the people with clean energy here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Thanks very much. Thank you. Me. This was fun. Thank you, Jay. Thank you.